welcome back to the channel i'm here to do my may monthly wrap up so i did very well this month considering i kept thinking it was quite a slow month but it actually wasn't i did read 17 books this month it was a very interesting reading month for me because i had two dnfs a couple of five star reads some more mediocre reads but yeah, let's get straight into it because I don't like long intros. This book I have is A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the author of the Hunger Games trilogy. I love those books. So when A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes came out, I wasn't too interested because I kept thinking that it was going to ruin the experience for me. So I think this came out in 2020 during the pandemic. And like I said, I never picked it up. I didn't even have a copy of the book. And I actually really, really enjoyed it. I gave it a four stars. This book follows Koro. I can't can't say his name properly this follows president snow as we know him now in the present day hunger games but in this book he's just snow he's actually quite poor not living the life that we know he has and he becomes a mentor in the 10th annual hunger games so personally when reading this book i was actually more horrified by the games in this book than i was in the hunger games this just felt really really brutal and raw even though obviously the games are brutal and raw in the hunger games as well but this one just felt really really inhumane interesting to see the way that snow is in this book he has been given the chance to mentor the female tribute from district 12 and again i'm not going to say too much because i actually genuinely like this book and i do want people to read it by the end of this book i was a bit shocked like i was in quite a lot of disbelief i didn't expect a dramatic change in him and this book does an amazing job of making very very subtle changes throughout the book so that you kind of pick up on a few things about him and then by the end of this you can understand where this little things come from that have turned him into the snow that we know i'm very excited for the movie adaptation i think the casting looks excellent i really cannot wait to see the movie and the way that they've done the movie i feel like already from the trailer of what we've seen they've done a good adaptation but i guess we won't know until it comes out i think it's coming out in november something so i'm very excited for that and i can't wait to watch it finally finished my reread of the trials of Apollo book one which is the hidden oracle i read this when this first came out and then i just never picked up the rest of the books i think i got obviously preoccupied with all the other books in the world and i just didn't have didn't have time to do that but i reread this recently i loved it i did give it three stars um it obviously is not the same as the other books for me but still really really amazing in the Trials of Apollo series, we follow the god Apollo who has been punished and turned into a powerless 16 year old human. We follow him along his journey to complete certain tasks and adventures to get back into being a god. Um, and in this book, I like I said, I did like it. I definitely was different to the other books I read by Rick Ryden, which isn't a bad thing at all. I think maybe because we didn't have the other characters in this so i just felt a bit like eh. and i did also pick up book two which is dark prophecy i liked this one significantly more than this one i still gave it a 3.5 stars i'm very excited to start book three which i probably will get into this month in june i've heard some interesting things about book three i also have been spoiled for this stupid series about a certain character death and i think that happens in book three so i am ready for that then i read my first five stars of may and that is a diary of blood by st gibson i have the beautiful fairy loot edition which i hunted for after and this is my annotated paperback i love the paperbacks absolutely stunning i think i bought this from waterstones possibly there are many many tales about dracula but there aren't many tales about dracula and his wives now this book follows constanta who is one of dracula's wives and at the start she is turned into a vampire basically by dracula and it's just her and dracula and then as their family expands and as he adds to the family things start to go a bit twisted now i have to say the prose in this was absolutely stunning the writing was what hooked me completely i just simply loved it i love the writing i've annotated it i've highlighted it i've underlined some of my favorite lines i really really enjoyed this i loved reading about constanta and the way that she changes throughout the many decades they're together i loved it i gave it a big fat five stars really really happy i read this annoyed i kept it off for so long but I read it now i love it i will talk about it many many times i'm sure and then i read an arc by bloomsbury called let's play murder by cassia lupo and this was actually quite a surpri surprising read for me i wasn't expecting to like it but i did like it and i gave it a four stars summary says veronica hates vr and when she accidentally gets sucked into the game she'll do anything to leave but the only way out is to get to the end solve the murder mystery reveal the killer and ideally win the grand prize 
It should be straightforward, but something doesn't feel right. There are blackouts, glitches, strange characters, and four other players that Veronica can't trust. She can't help feeling that a mysterious shadow is haunting their footsteps, toying with them. Then a player dies. Veronica has to ask herself if this is a part of the game or if there's a real killer playing by their own rules. The little plot twist at the end was semi-predictable, semi-not predictable. Pleasantly surprised by this. It was giving me um, Ready Player One vibe. But yeah, like I said, I annotated it. Very happy to have had this arc and read it. I do recommend it if you like that kind of thing, the VR sci-fi feel. If you don't, even if you like murder mystery, it might be your thing. I went into this expecting more to like the, mur the murder mystery bit, which I did end up liking more. So yeah, happy I read this. Then I read my first DNF of May, Fourth Wing by, oh God, what is it? Rebecca Yaros, I think. Um, No hate to the author. Please don't come for me if you like this book. And if you do come for me, I don't care because I didn't like this book. I have a couple things to say. I just didn't like the writing characters felt very bland it just felt like we were trying too hard with the enemies to lovers thing i'm not even gonna talk about the summary because i can't remember what happened in the book to talk about it and i don't have the book anymore i did own it physically i returned it to amazon and i got my 18 pounds back because i just thought it was absolutely rubbish it was marketed as adult fantasy it was not adult fantasy i was expecting things along the line of like um, the Dandelion Disney, even Fonda Lee's work, stuff like that, even Brandt Sanderson's work, you know, that's like adult stuff. But this felt like a children's YA cliche novel and I just was not interested. Um, like I said, it was very cliche, but you know what? I think a lot of people enjoyed the fact that it had dragons, which I did too. I loved the dragons, the dragons saved me. I got to about 80% and then DNF'd and I still count that towards my Goodreads goal because... I still read quite a lot. So if I get to 50% and then I DNF after that, I count it towards my Goodreads gold. If I don't, then I don't. But yeah, I don't want to talk about this book anymore. I didn't like it. If you like it, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you liked it. I think for a lot of people, this was a no brain read, just reading it to have a good time. And yeah. And I just didn't understand the, the romance either. Like, why are people shipping this? Because her mom literally killed his mom or some shit like that. Like, I can't remember. Anyway moving on i read this incredible book the stationery shop of tehran by marjan kamali but oh my god this was so so beautiful i will read you the summary roya loves nothing better than to while away the hours in the stationery shop run by mr fakhri the store stocked with fountain pens with fountain pens shiny ink bottles thick pads of writing paper also carries translations of literature from all over the world bahman with his burning passion for justice is like no no one else she has ever met but all around them, as the relationship blossoms, life in Tehran is changing. Suddenly, shockingly, violence erupts, a coup d'etat that forever changes their country's future as well as their own. Now, this book is told from the POV of Roya, who at first when she meets Bahram is 17, and they meet many, many, many decades later when she is 77, I believe, and her and Bahram was so beautiful, such a beautiful couple, oh my god, like, there was a lot of moments where I cried, especially at the end, like in the last couple of chapters, because we got a chapter from Mr. Fakhri's POV, which I wasn't expecting. And that just tied up a lot of loose ends. But this was just a heartbreaking tale. If you want something that is really going to suck you in, it's really going to get you interested in the drama and the thrill of the book and also the heart wrenching moments. Definitely give this a read. I loved it. I'm so glad I read it. Did I say I gave this a 4.5 stars? It wasn't exactly five stars for me because... As emotional as it was, I wanted it to be more emotional, but that was just a me thing, not a thing with the book, obviously. But yeah, 4.5 stars. Highly recommend this book. I read this lovely little spicy novella by my lovely friend Macy Tiriosa, and this is the author of Red Roses and Black Dahlias, which I read at the start of this year and I absolutely loved. The author released this little novella as a way to block up some of her writing and just give herself a little break um, between these the novels following Red Roses and Black Dahlias. And I thought this novella was so beautiful. It is a spicy novella following two lovely characters. I loved both of these characters. If you're not into the spicy stuff, don't read this book because it is completely full of the spicy things. I really enjoyed it. What can I say? Macy Tiriosa has really become one of my favourite authors and I will consume anything she has written. I'm really excited for book two. I think it's coming on later this year. But yeah, I love this little novella. I gave it four stars. Then I read another arc called Shark Heart by Emily Hebeck. My friend reached out to me who works with this publisher and when she was talking to me about this book, she was like, oh, basically he turns into a shark 
and it's actually quite emotional. I might make you cry. I was like, he turns into a shark and shark. So I'm thinking fantasy, sci-fi, something like that. But actually, no, it's just a romance contemporary. I didn't necessarily cry. I did get a little bit teary, but it was actually so good. The relationship between these two characters so it's lewis and wren and they've just got married this is the first year of marriage and lewis has been diagnosed with a very long-winded name but he has been diagnosed to become a great white shark and in this world people genuinely have symptoms and they transform into animals and their consciousness is still inside while they are that animal they just can't communicate or anything like that so he becomes a shark like i said i was very pleasantly pleasantly surprised by this i did give it four stars i have a review on my instagram and goodreads i will link any reviews i've done for these books down below and i read project north by chelsea faridi faridi and this is a lovely little graphic novel i believe it's out now yeah definitely out it came out in february got to it a bit late but this is such a lovely read so it says welcome to the year 2122 Ren Mittal's last memory in the year 1996 is getting on a bus to visit his mystery pen pal Georgia. When he wakes up 2122, he thinks he might be hallucinating. He's not. Tech conglomerate Chronotech sponsors a time travel program to help students in 2122 learn what real history was really like from real life subjects who have been transported in the future and Ren is one of them. This was a very jarring read as well, especially with some of the plot twists and information we found out throughout. But I thought it was a, it was such an interesting read, such a fun read too. It had a lot of mystery to it, like a kind of like a who done it. I read this in one sitting. I really did enjoy it, so I do recommend this. I did give it a four stars, and I do believe it's out now. Then I read Friend Zoned by Evelyn Solar. If you've been here for a while and you've watched my couple videos before, I am a big fan of Evelyn Solar. This is her new book called Friend Zoned, being released on June second, which is actually the day that I'm filming this. But I was given an arc of this book. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four stars. I loved the cameos from the characters in her other books. I will just read you the summary. They say the best things come when you least expect it. Burned by her ex-husband and a messy divorce, Jeannie Dubois isn't looking for anything more than a good friend. Besides, she's still dealing with the ex who can't seem to let her go. We hate him, by the way. Insert NBA coach Aidan Walsh. Sure, he wants so much more than a friendship with the beautiful woman he met at a wedding, but he's sure he can play the part and he's good at biding his time. So for now, he'll fulfill any role she wants. But when these two friends become lovers, things quickly turn complicated when Jeannie finds out Aiden is so much more than just Manhattan's favourite coach. Can Aiden prove to Jeannie what they meant so much more or will she send him back to the friend zone? I really enjoyed this book. Um, it did feel quite long. That's the only criticism I have. And it was a long book. I felt like it could have been condensed a bit more, which is probably why I didn't give it a five stars and gave it a four stars. But I really enjoyed the book. I thought it was an amazing read. I love the characters. I really did like Jeannie. I felt so much pity and sympathy for her. She upgraded, if you ask me. He treats her like an absolute queen. We love romances where the girl is just completely smitten and the guy is completely smitten with her and they treat each other like kings and queens. It was an arc. Thank you so much to the author for giving me an arc. Then I read another ebook called Nemesis by Soraya, is it? I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So essentially, this book is about revenge and also a kind of second chance romance. The summary is very short on Goodreads. It just says, the deadliest monsters are the ones lurking in the shadows, the ones you least expect to strike. Victor Morales took something from me and I was back to orchestrate his downfall. Everything was going according to plan until the man I left seven years ago was hired to protect me again. Oh my god, I love the characters in this, the main characters in this, especially the girl and the guy, like their romance was so beautiful, so complicated and you felt the tension and it wasn't complicated for no apparent reason. She basically left him like a couple of years ago to go for her revenge and to get her revenge plan into place. She gets her revenge, which is incredible, so juicy. I loved that. Such a good revenge. And there's a little, little bit of a plot twist at the end. I wouldn't say it was a plot twist, like it was just a little bit of a twist, but I loved it. I thought it was so interesting. The main reason why I gave this a four stars was because of the writing. I really, really enjoyed the writing. And I think this was the debut, so if that's a fact, then this author has a very bright future ahead of them, I personally think. And the last book that I read for May was Yellow Face by R.F. Kwan. So I have the Waterstones edition signed and then I have my normal hardback, which I annotated. 
Can I even show that? And I did get this signed. This is a literary fiction. We follow a woman called June Haywood, who is an author. She's not very successful. She had one book that was published that kind of tanked. But then we have her friend, friend, Athena, who is American Chinese. She has published quite a few things and has become quite popular and quite prolific. But when Athena dies, June then goes to steal her manuscript, rewrites it, adds her own bits, and then publishes it as her own this book was shocking like this was a shocking shocking read it revealed a lot to me about the publishing industry because i don't know much about publish publishing and i did a video review for this so i will link that down below i haven't done a written review yet i love the book don't get me wrong but i just think i need to sit down and really get my thoughts in order i did give this a five stars i love all of rf kong's writing the way that she can genre hop into different things is a mark of an incredible writer this is pacey witty it's sharp it's satirical but I have to say that the discussions and the thoughts that this book picked up in my own mind were very, very interesting because it was one thing about why shouldn't a author who isn't necessarily the background of the book that's being published, for instance, not be able to write these things. So there was a whole discourse about, so what if she's white? Why can't she not talk about Chinese lives and Chinese experiences and whatnot? Like I said, I talk more about that in my review. Feel free to watch that. But yeah, I love this book. I gave it a five stars. I was very lucky to have my book signed by the author. We, I went to see her in Liverpool on the 28th of May. 28th of May. It was amazing. She's so intelligent. She could be a professor. Like, she's so, so cool. But yeah, guys, those are all the books that I read in May. 17 of them, was it? And yeah, like I said, I had a very interesting month. It went by quite quick. I had a lot of good reads, a lot of mediocre reads, some very interesting reads, and um, things that provoked very interesting thoughts as well. But like overall, I had a very good month. If you watched this in the entirety, thank you so much. I'd love to know what you read in the month of May or if you've read any of these books or have any thoughts about these books, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, until next time, see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.